Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Gadget Lab podcast. I'm Michael Calori. I am Mike Isaac. And uh, today we have Christina showing us some tiny cameras. And uh, we're also later, we're going to bring out a really cool microscope mount that lets you take pictures of things under a microscope using your smartphone. But first, we have some news. What's up? <laughs> Mike has some news for us about the, yes. uh, the fancy Google phone there in his hand. I do. This is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, which you've been hearing about for quite some time. But uh, Google debuted it you know, over a month ago, and we haven't seen it hit the stores. It was basically, this is the new phone, this is the second coming of Android, and you're going to get it soon. And then we heard nothing, right? But then finally... Finally, today... <laughs> after what, six rumored launches on yeah, the Ryzen's yeah, after network? Rumor after rumor that this phone is actually going to launch. It, it has finally come out, uh, available for uh, Verizon in the U.S. Uh, for $300, which is kind of pricey. But 300 bucks on contract. On a two-year contract. I believe that was my prediction for the pricing. That, and you got it right. But no, never mind. But <laughs> <laughs> there was kind of a saga, though, like behind the scenes... Uh, with uh, getting this phone out. You know, Verizon and Google kind of went head-to-head -head on a, uh, basically Google's new wallet app, which is their, uh, their NFC-based solution to mobile payments. That's like the near-field communication? That's like if you're at the Whole Foods and you want to pay, you just tap your phone against the cash register? And... Right, exactly. They want, they want to make your phone like the new Swiss Army knife, right? So you don't have to have a wallet anymore. You don't have to have... Uh, another phone. I don't know. What else could you do with a phone? A credit card? A credit card. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They wanted this to guy. do everything. So yeah, I don't, I don't so know. So it's 21st century. Phone. I don't have a phone. So, so basically Verizon wanted to keep Wallet off of this phone because uh, the phone companies are forming this joint venture called ISIS mm. to uh, institute their own mobile payment solution at some point. But the funny thing is, is ISIS is still in its sort of like fledgling stages, they don't have a product out, uh, they don't really know what it was, it's going to be, or at least we don't know what it's going to be yet, but Google Wallet has already debuted, right? So this is the second phone that has NFC on it. You expect this will be the big uh, push into Google Wallet with the, the Nexus S before it, and we can't use it. So, so the reason the phone was delayed is because Verizon didn't want to use Google's automatic payment system yeah. that is already up and running yes. at thousands of locations nationwide yes. so they can replace it with their own yes. built by committee by all the characters coming soon sometime in 2012. Yes. Oh, that's really smart. Yeah, it was, it was awesome customer service on Verizon's behalf. Really makes me want to buy the phone. Right. Uh, exactly. Anyway, if you want to decide whether or not the phone is something you want to purchase, uh, you can read Mike's review, this Mike's review, yes. uh, at Wired.com right now. It's live on the internet. Yeah. And I believe he gave it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, the big reason you'd want it, of course, besides the fact that it's a hot new phone that everybody's been waiting for, is that uh, it, it runs Ice Cream Sandwich, the latest Android, and it is the purest version of Ice Cream Sandwich. There's no skinning or anything. It's exactly how Google intended it. Yeah. Um, and uh, you liked it. It's rad. I really liked it. It's, um, it's probably the best operating system that, that Google has put out for mobile today, and the best wow. phone that it's been running on. Is yeah. it better than the iPhone? That's the first question I he always get. He just got it? an iPhone, <laughs> and he can't, he can't shut up about okay, it. Okay, I it. did. I've been playing with an iPhone. I've been playing with both phones. And, and I he's really, on Instagram now, and I am MJ on <laughs> underscore Isaac, Jesus, with follow two me. A's I make, on Instagram. I take good shots. Uh, okay, let's go to Christina. Uh, speaking of taking shots, uh, she's going to show us she's a bunch drunk. of little tiny cameras, and then she's going to drink some booze. Uh, and then we're going to come back and take a look at the uh, skylight scope mount. Hi, I'm Christina Bonington, and today I've got some teensy tiny miniature cameras to show you. They're perfect for fitting inside a stocking. First up, we've got the Kodak Easy Share Mini. It can take pictures up to 10 megapixels, and it's got a 3x optical zoom. It's got a 2.5 inch LCD viewfinder on the back. It's got a lot of the same features you'd find in a larger point and shoot, but it's definitely not the same quality. It'll run you $90, and if you are looking for more quality and not just the size, you're better off going with one of those larger cameras. This is the Mr. Digital Cloversan. He is a Japanese import and he's super tiny, fits on a keychain. 
you can slide this one side out and up pops a viewfinder. The pictures it's supposed to take are kind of Lomo style, you know, those filters you see on Instagram and Hipstamatic with the really oversaturated colors. It doesn't quite do it that well, but what it does have is a cool video feature uh, that lets you take kind of 8mm style of video. Finally, we have the Minox Classic Mini Digital Camera. It can take pictures up to 5.1 megapixels and it's styled after a Leica M3. It's got an optical viewfinder on the top and it's also got a 2 inch LCD viewfinder on the back. A lot of these knobs and things are just for decoration, but it, you can adjust the distance from 0.5 meters to 1 meter to infinity. And all this cool style, you're going to pay for it. It's $180. Don't know if it's worth it or not. Maybe if you have a nice little camera collection. Those were some very tiny cameras, uh, but here's a way that you can take pictures with your smartphone camera of very tiny things. Don't say it. This is the Skylight Scope Mount. Uh, this is a prototype, actually. Um, this is a project that's being developed by a couple of uh, engineers, uh, actually a designer from the medical industry and a geologist in Northern California. And it is an all-plastic mount, and it's a universal mount. So it holds your smartphone, any smartphone that'll fit inside of it. Android uh, or iPhone. Android, iPhone, uh, Windows phone, whatever you have with a camera on the back. Cool. Uh, you mount it onto any scope with a cylindrical eyepiece up to 1.75 inches. Hmm. Uh, so it fits on any uh, microscope. It fits on most telescopes and most spotting scopes. So birders and astronomers could use this too. Oh, um, perverts and peeping can be taking it to the next level. On yes. Instagram, you can add filters to your weird spying. Sorry, this is... Yeah, he's <laughs> taking it off the rails here. But, <laughs> I mean, basically, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a mount for educational purposes and for healthcare and for basically geeks who like to look at small things on, uh, on slides. So um, we were playing around with it this morning. We took some really awesome pictures of uh, ants. Scary ass ants. Yeah, really cool close-ups of ants. Also plants. Uh, we had a couple of flowers. Pants? Uh, pants. We looked at some fibers. Shanties? Uh, we looked at some rice seasoning. It's just amazing. You, it, like normal everyday household objects become really awesome when you look at them uh, under the, the skylight mount. Um, it's a $60 item. And right now, uh, you can pre-order it on Kickstarter. Uh, the team actually met their funding uh, this week, but there's still another two weeks to buy in. And uh, if you pledge $60, you can get a mount uh, for, your, for yourself. And every five that are purchased, uh, they're going to give one away. Uh, mm -hmm. They're going to give them either to an educational uh, organization or they're going to give them to a medical organization for research. Mm -hmm. uh, another cool application, not just for taking pictures and tweeting them, is that um, you can actually set up a Skype session or a FaceTime session. We also did this this morning, which is really cool. So somebody mounts their phone on here and then initiates FaceTime, and then somewhere else in the world, somebody can look at their phone uh, or on their computer if it's Skype and see what you're looking at through the microscope or through the telescope. So oh, um, scientists teleconferencing across the world. Yeah, or Low budget, or you know, just friends hanging out, looking at stuff. Right. <laughs> Check out my ants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can help people you help people identify pests in their gardens. Huh. There's all kinds of cool applications to this. I have an thing. uncle that could help me there, probably. Yeah? Well, yeah. does he have Skype? Uh, I don't know if he knows how to figure that out. That would be a hard part. Anyway, um, is it, when is it coming out? Is, it's is coming it out next year. So, oh, this, okay. like I said, this is a prototype. This is fabricated. Oh. It's entirely plastic. Um, it's just a few simple pieces, very easy to mount. It comes with a couple of uh, rings, um, little sizing rings that you can use to fit around any eyepiece. And it'll even fit around eyepieces that have obstructions on them. So if you have like a focus ring or some sort of you know, screw mount in there, it clamps right around it. The clamp is very simple. Kids can operate it. Um, people with shaky hands can operate it. Uh, it's really cool. And if, you're, if you get one, and you're tweeting pictures or Instagramming pictures, use the hashtag skylightscope, all one word. That's the new hashtag that the founders have told us that they want to start using. So That's pretty cool. We're really excited about this. Uh, when it finally launches, we'll let you know on Gadget Lab. 
And um, you can find out more by going to skylightscope.com and you can buy into the uh, Kickstarter funding project uh, on their website. Uh, on the Kickstarter website, there's a link on their website to, to buy in. Sweet. So that's all we have for the Gadget Lab this week. We'll be back next week to show you a fancy camera and uh, probably another fancy phone or two. And uh, we will have more news for you, of course. So until then, we'll see you later.